Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Well, while I'm waiting for the oil cooler to get here, I thought I'd work on this uh, auxiliary connections. Um, I've got some quarter inch quick connectors and I need an adapter to go from this DIN to quarter inch and I went to uh, three different hydraulic places that are local here and uh, of course nobody knew what I wanted. <laughs> Everything is JIC around. So I thought, well, see if I can't come up with something. I looked online and I found a place that uh, had the adapter, only one place I could find it. And they wanted 25 bucks for this little piece to go from the den to the pipe thread. And I thought, there ain't no way I'm paying that much, because I need two of them. I mean, <laughs> besides that, you guys know me. I'm cheap. <laughs> so anyways, I get looking through all my stuff and trying to figure out the threads and all that stuff. and. Uh, I found these. It's just quarter inch on this end and a uh, regular flare fitting. So I tried to try this nut on there and it actually screws on, tightened up fine. So I took, uh, well, let me go over and gather up the part. So here's the regular cap that was on there and of course that's the end that we need to recreate so I took this cap off and I took that little plastic snap ring off there so now I've got a sample of, of what this seals into so I took a uh, uh, protractor kind of a thingy and I figured out that it was 12 degrees so I took this put it in the lathe and I turned this down to the 12 degrees um, it takes partner all of this tapered part away and as you can see this nut screws right on there nicely and it's not floppy or anything so I've got it all together and I've got a big old meter it goes to 2,000 pounds so We'll see if it actually works. I haven't actually tried it yet, so we'll see if we can blow some oil all over or whether it'll work. So let me fire it up. on this part I didn't put anything sealing on there at all and I didn't really crank everything down very tight but my uh, connection here is not leaking so I think that's going to work so I'm going to uh, make one for the other side and uh, I'll set it up over in the a little lathe and I'll show you how I did it. You've got you over here to the just using a little grizzly lathe 
and I got a window right back here and of course it's sunny today so it makes it real nice for me I can see good but the camera doesn't like it and I'm up against the wall so I don't really have much options so hopefully you guys are going to be able to see all right so just chuck that baby up in there and then I've got a born bar which I had to skinny down a little bit because this hole's pretty small and I've got the uh, compound set to 12 degrees so I'll, uh, I'll bring that so it's about there because I'll use the compound to make all the movements so it stays at the 12 degrees This so uh, it's just touching. Lock the carriage. And I found on the other one that if I cut on the way out, it seems to work better. I say first starting out that boring bar is just a little bit fat you can see it wiggling a little bit but once we get started get a little clearance we'll be fine I found that only go about five or ten thousandths at a time. That way I don't uh, keep a nice, clean, smooth cut. Brass is kind of different to work with. And I think they do make these in steel, which might be a better choice, but this is what I have, so if I have problems, I can always do the same thing to a steel one. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going and what I do is I back this out and I use this to uh, test fit it and then once we get this so it fits in, the, now on the original one the o-ring just goes into the taper just a little ways. So. When you say taking that little bit at a time, it does take a while, so I'll show you when I get more towards the uh, finished product. Well, I got some kind of a cobbled up deal to, to hold the camera on the lathe here. I don't know if it's going to vibrate or what, but see if, see if it works. see the opening be about uh, 
12. Nope, got a little ways to go. Just, uh, I think we still got to go a little more. Yeah, see the o ring's just starting to enter there. So, like I said, as soon as this ridge is gone, we're, we're pretty much where we want to be. The old ring is out of sight now, so still got just a whisker to go.
I got some grit in the threads. There. So, by the time that's tightened down, it should be golden. So, I'm just going to take a couple of really light, slow passes just to get that polished up a little bit. And uh, we'll take her out and I'll give you a close up of what it looks like. Got my quick connectors mounted and uh, didn't like the idea of it flopping around like that. You know when you get something else hooked on there it's going to put a lot of strain on that right there so I made a little took the, the bracket clamp off I made a little bracket this little piece of band iron drilled and tapped to mount it on there and I put a little spring clip. I don't know where I got these. I had them a long time. I think they were government surplus stuff. Kind of one of them surplus stores. But anyway, it's a pretty potent little clip. They just fit nicely on this nut on the end of the hose. So just clip it on there. Got some support here. And see this one. I'll defend it out just a little whisker if I want to. I'll decide that later. But there's clearance there. So that gives a lot more support. Just a little quirky thing, just another little little improvement that might make life easier. If you enjoyed her, give me a thumbs up. See you next time.